as you can see, I am here on the beautiful island of Mystique. Foie. Of course I'm not. I'm actually in London. But thanks to green screen technology, ladies and gentlemen, foie, 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 I can actually be anywhere. I could be the House of Commons. I could be at Buckingham Palace, Your Majesty. Or I could be on the moon. Really, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you today that green screen is somewhat old hat. Thanks to our wonderful friends at Framestore, they are working closely with a new development called Intelligent Artifice, which even machines can learn. And I know for a fact that my good friends in Washington, D.C., are also very keen on this new development. In, fa in fact, one of them's dialing in now. Ooh, uh, uh, uh. Stop what you're doing, Boris. Don't say another word. I am now speaking. You are being conned, Boris. I checked out this frame store mob. They made that movie Gravity. You know the movie where they send the coffee guy up into space? They probably faked the moon landings. Uh, Mr. President. Fake news, Boris. You're being conned. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. You're nuts. It's not great. And I should know. Maybe CGI some dinosaurs. You know, look at my hands. I'm a T-Rump. <coughs> Somebody give me a pen. We're going to change the name of this company. Thank you, Boris and Donald, for that amazing introduction. Welcome to our first Lions Live presentation. My name is Mike McGee, and I am Chief Creative Officer and a co-founder of Framestore. And I am joined today by my colleague and ECD, William Bartlett. In this session, we are hoping to demystify deepfakes and explore how manipulating pixels through machine learning can open up a world of new ideas and creative possibilities. For some time now, Artificial intelligence and machine learning has steadily made its way into many aspects of new technology. And over the last few years, the world of image creation has begun to embrace the possibilities. What's so exciting about this development is that it can be anything from speeding up an existing process by up to a thousand times to an entirely new way of generating patterns of pixels and ultimately images. It's not a small improvement in an existing technique, but a totally new way of approaching production. Back in 2013, we worked on a challenging commercial that required bringing Audrey Hepburn back to life. Using traditional VFX methods, we studied old photographs and film footage to carefully model a CG version of her head. We then lit and animated her face before tracking it back onto the live-action footage that had been recorded on location. This meticulous and painstaking process took about six months. Compare that to the sketch at the beginning of this presentation, which we created in a little over three weeks, despite having to shoot the footage remotely on an iPhone, and of course, let's not forget, they're talking. Using deepfake technology, we trained a computer program known as a neural network to learn how to create synthetic versions of the two faces. In a moment, we're gonna look in a bit more detail at how you take control of these pixels, so we not only make a face, but animate it too. But first, we're going to do a little science and talk about neural networks in general. Let's look at an example of a simple way to use a neural network. Imagine we want to create a system that can recognize handwritten numbers from 0 to 9. Each number is written on a background that is 20 pixels wide and 20 pixels high, so 400 pixels in total. Let's take these 400 values and convert them into 10 values, namely the probability of the input image representing a number from 0 to 9. Inspired by biological brains, we could describe each of these values to behave like a neuron. In our brains, the value is a small electrical charge, but for us, it will be the luminance of one of our dots. We introduced two extra layers to break down the process into simpler steps. And once we've connected them all together, we describe this system as a network. This is very dull. I don't agree with it. Why are you talking about neural networks? I mean, who are these guys? You know, when I was on network, I had the best ratings. I've never heard of neural networks. OK. Imagine that in the penultimate layer, we want to recognize various shapes 
that are often used to write numbers. A loop in the top half of the screen or a loop in the bottom half, a line to the left or to the right, etc. From here, it's easy to understand how combinations of these features will describe a specific number. A loop top and bottom will be an 8. A loop at the top with a line on the right will be a 9, and so on. When a certain combination of neurons are fired by the incoming signals, the output is decoded by the final layer delivering the answer. The next layer is all about analysing whether small lines and edges exist that when combined produce the loops and longer lines of the following stage. We're breaking down the problem into smaller and smaller components that are linked together within the network. The combination of lit neurons in one layer will trigger different neurons in the next gradually reducing the problem until the solution is found. All that remains is to find a way to identify the small visual features in the first place. Look at these four alternatives of a 10 by 10 part of the grid. Each one has an even split of white and black pixels, but we want our computer program to identify the one that is most like our target image. Adding up the values of all the pixels gives us the same answer for each grid. But what if we count the pixels inside our target area as two, not one? Immediately, we get some separation in the sums. Next, we are going to subtract the value of the pixels in the surrounding area of our target as we are looking for an edge, not a blob. In other words, white pixels in this area take away from the score rather than adding to it. This process is called weighting. By changing the weights inside our grid, we've described a function where a higher number represents a closer match to the target image. And of course, we can describe all sorts of shapes in this way and thereby build up the first layer of our system. This is an example of a neural network and how it might function, but the next step is the most powerful. It would be very time consuming to manually adjust the weights and balances of the input information at every neuron to improve how the system works. So instead, we let the computer do it. By feeding in examples of handwritten numbers and telling the program what the answer is, it can literally check its own accuracy. Having analysed a data set of example images, the program can make adjustments to the weights within the equations and then run the same tests again and see if it got better. By repeatedly running the same loop over and over and reanalyzing the same set of images, the system gradually becomes more accurate. It literally trains itself. This is machine learning. Tonight on Neural Networks, something to do with the brain. Who wants to watch that? That's very boring. So what does this all mean for pictures? And how did we get Boris and Donald to help? We trained a neural network with tens of thousands of images, and over time it is able to break down the data from a complex set of pixels into a simple version of core information and a network that allows us to reconstruct a photographic version of Boris. The position and movement data was the information we most wanted simplified. Once that was separated from the pixels that make up the likeness, it became easy for us to adjust. From an alternative performance, we replace the position and movement data and run that back through the network in the opposite direction, creating a new set of pixels and a photographic representation of our subject but now with a new performance. It's important to understand that creating a believable likeness is only partly about how someone looks. Equally fundamental is performance. Replacing my face with Boris Johnson's will not create a convincing doppelganger. See what I mean? It just looks weird. I don't sound like him, I don't move like him, I don't look like me, but I don't look like Boris either. Ah, that's better. For the process to be successful, the driving performance must be a very good impersonation of the character you are trying to mimic. This is just as important as the digital makeup that we can apply in post-production. We are going to move on from deepfakes in a moment to look at some of the other aspects of image creation that are being revolutionised by machine learning. But first, it's worth pausing to consider what this means for the credibility of images. Many of us are in the entertainment business, but it's not hard to see how these techniques could be used for far more sinister purposes. As tools improve and more people get a better understanding of how to create something convincing, we must assume that more and more videos of public figures will start to appear that are synthetic in origin and malicious in intent. Or as our friend Donald will put it, fake news. 
Machine learning is an enormously powerful tool that is transforming many areas of the VFX pipeline. Two of the areas in which we're making great strides are character animation and rigging. Rigging, I know all about rigging. Hillary Clinton, you know, crooked Hillary. Using today's standard tools, an animator can create around one second of finished animation per day. This clip of Spider-Man took 15 days to complete, but much of the realism could have been driven from machine learning techniques using a physics engine. This would have freed up the animator to concentrate on performance. Here we see a physics engine in action. The animator has simply specified the path along which the lamp must travel, but the detail of the movement is driven from a simulation. Alongside the animation, there is a vast amount of work that is done in the background that can also be improved. The complexity of rigs required to produce believable motion is immense. Render rigs can contain millions of nodes and include complex muscle and skin simulations that are very slow to render. Working with a government grant, we have been developing a tool that uses machine learning to enormously speed up this process. The tool takes each rig through an exhaustive range of motion. Imagine the longest, most complicated yoga session in history, containing thousands of unique poses. The skeleton and final body shape for all these poses are fed into a neural network model that learns the relationship between the character's skeleton and the final mesh. Once trained, this tool can then replace all the millions of nodes with one node containing the trained neural network model. On some of our test characters, this has taken down the evaluation time of the rig from 30 seconds per frame to 6 milliseconds per frame. That's a 5,000 fold speed up. Not only does this mean that our animators can use much higher resolution rigs in traditional work, it also holds out the very real possibility of using full film quality character rigs in real time immersive projects. There are several artificial intelligence uprising systems that have learned from hundreds of thousands of photographs the most likely sharp version for a set of blurry pixels. In some respects, it is not that the detail is not there, but rather it is blended into larger shapes and you need to do some maths to unpick the pattern. As you can see from these examples, areas of pixelation are reconstructed into sharper lines and texture. We've seen many films recently where story arcs cover decades and filmmakers want to show the main characters at different times in their lives. The Irishman, Avengers, Blade Runner and Star Wars have all created synthetic faces and integrated them into the live action footage. The deepfake technique has not been widely used in this context as the resolution is still limited. But as it improves, we are beginning to see it become part of the tool set for even top end visual effects work. We've been using the same machine learning techniques to assist with casting. Finding the right person for a campaign can be tricky and celebrities are often referenced in the initial brief. We're taking this process one step further with a tool we developed to quickly and easily blend faces together. As well as mixing images, we can also dial in controls for age, gender and other details like glasses or hair colour. As the technology develops, we will be able to apply the blended features as digital makeup allowing brands to have total control over the face of their campaign. Similar tools are being developed for landscapes, concept art and many other areas of the creative process. Finally, here's one you can try at home. NVIDIA has an artificial intelligence playground on their website with a couple of tools you can have a look at. One of them is of special interest to me because I'm not very good at drawing. It allows you to block out a scene with a simple paint box interface and it then puts together a photographic version of your drawing based on a neural network that has analysed many thousands of images. Let's have a go. Right, we've got a blue sky, which is a good start. Now let's add the sea. And since it's summer, I'll draw in some sand. Now I prefer my beaches to have a bit more character, so I'm going to add a few rocks in the foreground to give it a bit of shape. One here and one over here. And maybe we could have a mountain in the background and perhaps a little outcrop on this side. So now it feels like we're in a nice cove. A couple of bushes in the foreground too, maybe a couple there and one over there. And last is it looks a bit hot for me, I'm gonna add a little cloud cover to take the heat out of the midday sun. Perfect, just where we all want to be. Hopefully you all know a little more about AI, machine learning and neural networks. 
Over the coming decades, technology will have a transformative effect on all of our lives. It promises a greater depth of understanding that will benefit a wide range of human endeavors in areas such as medical diagnosis and treatment, self-driving cars, personalized learning and education, and even digital empathy. What excites us about computers that can teach themselves is they offer new ways to enhance our creative processes. The speeding up of existing techniques will provide us with more time to experiment, iterate, and ultimately take more creative risks. Imagine having a virtual collaborator that could learn your personal aesthetic and deliver a composition, a character, or a design that was already in your style. And the longer you collaborate with it, the better it would know you. Or a collaborator who could perfectly imitate you and challenge you to outdo yourself. Creating these entirely new production techniques will open up new possibilities for storytellers and brand engagement. At Framestore, new technology is at the core of our history and still remains at the heart of everything we do. But we're not distracted by the excitement of the latest gadgets. In the end, they're just tools. Powerful tools for sure, but technology is a means to an end, and the end is the same as it always was. A good idea and a well-told story. Will machine learning one day be coming up with the ideas too? For now, we'll have to wait and see. The future is going to be an exciting place to work, and at Framestore, we're looking forward to being in the heart of the action.